what is going on you guys it is your host Avery here one to bring you guys a video talking about Crash Bandicoot the insane trilogy you guys this is my childhood in a nutshell I absolutely fell in love with this game I just beat it earlier today I beat it in four days yes that's right I beat Crash 1 in like a day I beat Crash 2 in like a day and a half and I beat Crash 3 in like a day and a half um, but before I get into the main juicy points about my review, I want to get into, I guess, some sort of background with this review. If you guys saw the live stream, then you will know, um, I guess, that I was streaming Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> um, but the reason why I privated the live stream is about an hour and eight minutes long of, of the first few levels of um, Crash Bandicoot 1. Well... My it got four copyright claims. I didn't get any strikes or anything. I'm fine. But this group called Ingrooves on apparently on behalf of Activision ended up um, claiming the music from Vicarious Visions Audio, obviously the makers of the game, of some of the levels like the Crash Bandicoot main theme, um, Jungle Rollers level, Upstream. They ended up taking those um, levels and they put four copyright claims on them. Um, so I didn't want them getting any sort of money, and I haven't contacted them yet. I don't really know if I'm going to just because my channel is so small, but I do think it's kind of messed up that either it's on YouTube's end or their end that uh, they ended up copyright claiming um, my video four times. And so this is fair use. I don't really care what anybody says. Um, but I, I don't want them to get the money. I, w I would rather Vicarious Visions to get the money, and I don't think Vicarious Visions is getting the money. But besides that, it's still a great game. I wouldn't hold this against them if you are one of those people that is really against this stuff and doesn't buy products because of it. I wouldn't hold this against them. You know, they're just trying to do their job. They want to make sure that, you know, they're... <clears throat> their uh, music isn't being published without their consent, I guess, even though I was only streaming the game, which is legal. Um, it is my legal right. I could take them to court uh, if I wanted to, but I'm not. But I just kind of wanted to get this out of the way that, you know, disregard this with my review. This will not affect my review personally, and um, I just want to keep it real and uh, keep it 100 with you guys. So, without any further ado, let's just sort of dive into the review. So, <clears throat> I want to keep this steel image up just to show you the major differences between the Insane Trilogy and the original. Now, when I live stream the game, someone had asked me how much this costs. It's cost $39.99 US dollars, so it's $40, so you're not paying the full $60 for a game. You're getting three full-fledged games fully remastered from the ground up for $40. That right there is already amazing because so many companies, especially Activision with the Call of Duty series, would charge you a full $60 for Modern Warfare Remastered. Um, luckily, they didn't. Now that they're selling Modern Warfare Remastered separately, they're only charging $40, but there are um, companies out there that would charge you a full 60 or even when Infinite Warfare was bundled with uh, Modern Warfare Remastered, you basically had to pay out like 80 or 90 bucks at launch to get both games. So it was it was just stupid. Um, how how does the game feel? I know that a lot of people have been wondering about this with all the live streams going on. How does the game feel? The game feels great. Um, luckily, it's not like the PlayStation Three original Crash uh, versions because I, I tried I played a little bit of Crash One on the PlayStation Three for I think I downloaded it for like for free, um, and it played all right. The problem was was that you had to use the uh, the analog stick. And it made Crash very hard to control. I tried using the analog sticks in this remastered version in all three games. And it just did not feel good to me. Um, I was born in 1996, so I didn't play Crash when it first came out, obviously. Um, I still remember when I was like maybe five, six years old. And my babysitter would bring Crash 1, sometimes Crash Warped, which is the third Crash game in the series, over to my house. And I would play it on my PlayStation 1. And I just remember having a blast. Uh, from what I do remember, <laughs> but I don't remember um, using the diagonal six on the PS1. Maybe you had to. I'm not too sure. Um, but what I do know is that um, I had a blast with it back then, and I still had a blast with it now. Obviously, Crash One maybe rage a lot. Um, the high road is a very difficult level. Also, side note: if you hear, um, what do you call it? 
uh, fireworks in the background. It's because it's 4th of July. I'm recording this on the 4th of July, but I'm posting it on the 5th of July. Um, so I do apologize for that. But back to the review. The game still does feel great. You don't have to use the analog sticks on PlayStation 4. You can use the diagonal buttons or the, the L3 and R3, the, the diagonal things. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you don't have to use the, the, the analog sticks. I felt like that the analog sticks just... I don't know. To me, I can't use an analog stick in a platformer. I just can't. I have to use just regular buttons and controllers and all that fun stuff. <laughs> now, if, if you did play the original um, Crash, the, the first original three games, Crash 1, Crash 2, Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Warp, um, then you will know that there are obviously some glitches, um, some exploits, and the games got easier as you progress. So, like, Crash 1 was obviously very hard. Um, like I just mentioned, the level, the high road is very hard. Um, but of course, after I beat the level legitly, of course, I realized that there's an exploit where you can just jump on the rope and then pretty much just go the whole way on the rope, which is very good, especially for speedrunners, because that's what speedrunners will do to especially 100% of the game in order to get like the relics and stuff like that is that they will use exploits in the game. Also cheat codes and other exploits, such as what I just mentioned with the rope on the high road, uh, Vicarious Visions has kept all of that in. Um, I'm not sure if they kept this in, but I'm 99.99% .99 positive that they took it out, but I know, at least if I remember correctly, there were, um, there was like a code that you could put in, in, uh, the Crash games to where you could be able to play a demo of the Spyro game that Naughty Dog was bringing out later, um, that, in that time period, because it would be like Crash, and then they would bring out a Spyro game later. Um, so you used to be able to play a demo of the next Spiral game coming out in the Crash games. Um, Vicarious Visions, as far as I know, has taken that out. I doubt that they would remaster a demo. <laughs> I, I highly, highly doubt that they would go into the exploit cheat code just to remaster a demo of Spyro. <laughs> now, what is nice is that I watched a review before the game actually came out, and Vicarious Visions has said that they are listening to the community, that, um... When it comes to Spyro, because the guy did ask that to Andy, he said, could we see a Spyro remaster? And he said, we're listening to the community, we're listening to the community. So hopefully, them saying we're listening to the community will translate to a remaster, hopefully, uh, at E3 2018 or E3 2019. Um, if that happens, I will be ecstatic, um, because I played a lot more Spyro than I ever did Crash. Um, so I, I definitely remember a lot more about Spyro than I do with Crash. Honestly, like they, the Vicarious Visions could hire me to develop Spyro Remaster all by myself because I know that game inside now. <laughs> like I, I could do a speed run and hold the fastest record. Um, not trying to toot my own horn. That's just how well I know the games. I feel. So as you can tell by the picture as well, you can tell that obviously the graphics have had a major, major overhaul, and it is so great to see these in updated, you know, 1080p on the PS4, 1440p on PS4 Pro, and it's just, it, it's beautiful, like, it really is. Just to show you some other images, this is an image right here in Crash Warped um, of the updated graphics. It's beautiful, amazing. This is Coco Bandicoot right here. Uh, she's my waifu. <laughs> uh, I just wish she was older. Shoddy bad. Um, here's her again. Uh, just the amount of detail that they put into this. Um, like her freaking out over the boulder and Crash does the same thing. Here's another image of the levels and just the amount of detail and work that went into this, the love and the care is just absolutely amazing. Uh, here's another image. Uh, here's just another image right here. Um, obviously Coco is a playable character in all three games. Um, I'm not going to talk about that here of how to unlock that because this is just a review, but she plays just like Crash and it's great. Um, and it just, it, it, it's, it's amazing game. If you liked the original Crashes, you're going to love this. Uh, it plays great. There's no lag. Uh, there's no nothing really. Um, the trophy hunting, which I also want to talk about is very, very difficult. Um, I've gotten several of the trophies across all three games, uh, just playing through it. Um, even in my playthrough of Crash Warped, I went back to get some of the other trophies, but it's definitely very difficult trophies, just because, like, in, in Crash 1, for example, it, since it is the hardest Crash game out of all the other Crash games ever made, in order to, like, 100% that game, you have to beat every single level without dying, because the way that it works in Crash 1 is that you have to break every single box, but then in order to get the gem after breaking every single box, you cannot die. So, like, you'll get in the end of the level, and it'll be like, perfect, 
but you died. And so you have to redo that entire level and redo everything that you did, which can obviously be very much of a headache, um, especially on the much more difficult levels. So that's definitely not something that I'm looking forward to doing if I even ever do it. Um, Crash 2 and 3, pretty much same thing, except you don't have to beat every level without dying. You just have to go back and get all the gems, and then obviously you have to be able to get a gold relic or higher in the time trials, which is just getting a certain time done on the time trial in order to get the relic. Because you either get like blue, gold, or platinum. I think it's called sapphire, but sapphire, gold, or platinum. You need to get gold or higher in order to get the trophy. So it's definitely a challenge for trophy hunters. Uh, like myself, because I, I definitely want to trophy hunt in this game as much as I can. I don't see myself platinum, platinuming all three games, unfortunately. But uh, it, it's still a blast just to be able to go back and play. Um, and to just, you know, relive those 1996 memories. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I know that this review has been kind of long. But the final verdict for Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. Game is beautiful. Game plays great. Graphics amazing. Complete overhaul from the ground up. Reliving my childhood. This game deserves the incredible 10 out of 10 for a remaster. This is the best remaster I've ever seen of a, of a game from the PlayStation 1. Hell, 1996 in general. Th this is 10 out of 10. I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm fanboying out. Like I said, I played a lot more Spyro than I did Crash. But this deserves a 10 out of 10. Um... The only thing that I maybe is a complaint is, um, which wouldn't really affect the score at all, is just uh, make the trophies easier to get. Don't don't make Crash One so punishing. I know you wanted to stick to the original thing, but man, that's hard. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching as always, and subscribe if you're not already. If you want to see more reviews, be sure to hit that like button. Would really appreciate it.